Hey everyone, my name's Andy. My channel's Finding Value. If you like this content, please subscribe. Today I'm gonna go over understanding ratios. And this is an important topic because this is how we value everything in the world. This is our compass. And if you don't understand how to value things, you're not gonna know if you're buying underpriced or undervalued uh, assets or if you're buying overpriced assets. You don't know when to buy or sell. This is what tells us what's the, the value of that asset. This gives you the confidence to buy it when it's cheap and to hold when it's going higher. So we'll jump in here. I'm gonna give a lot of examples in this presentation. So I call this understanding ratios. So why do we use ratios? Uh, it gives us a direct comparison between two assets to tell relative value of those assets over time. So if you were to do a Dow to gold ratio, you could look at the ratio, compare it to history, and you can tell if it's overpriced, underpriced, or fairly valued. And what this does is it removes the currency's ability to twist and distort prices. There's some times where, let's say natural gas goes up 10% in terms of dollar terms. You'd, you'd think, great, I made a bunch of money. It went up 10%. But if everything else went up 30%, you lost purchasing power. And that asset could be extremely cheap in comparison to everything else in the world. So we've got inflation. It goes into the economy unevenly. And you lose relative value when you price things in terms of dollars. And what I call that is you're lost in the woods without a compass. So we, we price things using ratios right now. We just do it in dollars. And that dollar, since you have inflation and how it moves into the economy unevenly, uh, you don't understand the relative value, necessarily pricing things in dollars and comparing them in dollar terms. So you have to take that dollar out of it. Um, so supply and demand is really what drives these ratios up and down against each other. Uh, also money flows, but usually money flows follow the supply demand. So when something's expensive, and something's cheap, it's either from money flows or supply demand, and you could argue that money flow is the demand of that product. So if, if the Dow right now, the Dow is very expensive in relationship to gold, that means that more money has flowed into the stock market or the Dow than has gold. And eventually that money is going to rotate out of the overvalued sector into the undervalued sectors, driving that ratio uh, towards either fair value, but typically what happens is it goes from a very undervalued state to an overvalued state, and that money flow will, will cycle back around. Uh, and also you need to think of gold as money. It's the gauge against inflation and the money supply. And sometimes in history, gold gets undervalued in relationship to the money supply. And right now it is drastically cheap to the money supply today. This gives us another outlook on how to value anything. It could be uh, home, home, homes to gold ratio or how many ounces does it take to buy a house, the average house. Uh, you can do all sorts of ratios. Uh, and that's how everyone actually prices things in life. We just use an unreliable currency. That's all, that's all it is. So you're using the ratio of dollars. I'm saying you should use the ratio of gold or real money because that's where you can really crystal clear picture of the valuation of everything. So ratio investing, everything cycles between undervalued and overvalued over time against each other. It's just money flows and supply and demand. If one sector, now th this is a thought process here, like, a, a, you know, think about this for a little bit. If one sector increases in value and you hold the money supply flat in this economy, then somewhere another sector must go down in value of an equal amount. It means that money flowed from one sector to another sector. That's important to understand because all of these sectors have been going up. How is that possible unless they're adding in money? The deflationists say it's deflation, deflation, deflation. Then how the hell are all these sectors going up? Right now, commodities are down. So there's 
all of this money has been sucked out of commodities. That money is going to rotate back into commodities because of the cycles that are happening. The cycle is you're going to run out of commodities. There's going to be drastic underinvestment. All of this demand is going to come in front of it, which is coming for the electric vehicle. We'll call it the, the green revolution. And they don't have nearly enough supplies to build all this stuff. So this money is going to cycle back around from overvalued assets to undervalued assets. And that's where you get your purchasing power gains is that money's flowing from the overvalued to the undervalued, which brings that undervalued valuation way higher while drawing currency from the other sectors, pushing it down. And the relative value is that purchasing power gain. So over time, supply demand imbalances push and pull sectors higher and lower against one another. Uh, this even happens between the money supply and gold. And you hear all these, a lot of people call them crazy people. You know, they talk about very high gold price, prices. And they talk about a gold backing a certain percentage of the money supply. And that's all they're doing is they're saying, if we were to go back onto a gold standard, the, the gold price would have to be $50,000 an ounce. 50000 Not 2000 50000 and it did it in 1980. So we're gonna take a look at the money supply versus gold in history. And as you can see, we are dropping quite rapidly here. And it, it, it bottomed sometime 2010-ish maybe, um, maybe a little bit after that, 2013, because that was a little bit of a high. But they continue to print money and they continue to, to expand debt. Now, if we were to go back up here, this was a five. This was back in 1980. If we were to go back in five and we're at a quarter, that means that price has to rise in gold 10 times. That means that gold price would be $20,000 an ounce. And you've heard, a lot of people heard me talk, you know, about gold on here being $10,000 an ounce, $15,000 an ounce. That's what I'm doing is I'm saying we have X amount of gold that backs our currency. And in history, in 1980, it drove you know, prices back up to a 100% backing. I'm just saying maybe it's a 50% backing. That's $10,000 gold at least. Maybe it's, maybe it's 15 or 20,000 at a 50% at a backing. They're printing so much money that it, they're continuing to drive the ratio of money supply to gold down. Now, let's look at another ratio chart. This is the S&P commodity index versus the S&P 500 ratio. This is a ratio. And the green lines are when the commodities are cheap, these bubbles, and the red circles are when they're overpriced. And whenever you, I mean, if you look down here, you've got these windows of opportunity to really accumulate a lot of commodities when they're cheap. Now, gold absolutely crushed it during these entire periods. I have a feeling that we're coming up and it's going to absolutely destroy it because gold's cheap in relationship to the money supply, gold's cheap in relationship to stocks. And that's your valuation. That's your relative value. Your relative value is saying that gold is cheap in relationship to all these other assets. And here's the Dow to gold ratio just to show you. Uh, we're up here, it's declining, uh, which means that gold is outperforming the Dow. Just recently, I think we had a, a, a false breakout to the upside for, for stocks uh, and a false, yeah, false breaks, uh, breakout in stocks. I think it's called a slingshot. I think it's going to come back up. It's going to be a false breakup and it's going to slingshot lower. We might see some, some selling pressures, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what it, what it brings us. But this is the chart. This is the Dow to, go, Dow to go ratio saying that gold is cheap in relationship to stocks. So what are the ratios telling us? You know, what are the ratios telling us right now? We are at a 100 year low for commodities being cheap to the S&P 500. That means that they're an absolute steal. They're, they've never been this cheap in 100 years. The relative value is screaming a buy for commodities. Gold is screaming a buy in relationship to money itself. Now, if gold's cheap in relationship to the money supply and gold's cheap in relationship to the Dow or stocks, and commodities are cheap in relationship to gold, what you're seeing is this is a, this called a double ratio bet. So when gold it's cheap to everything else and you're cheap to gold when it revalues gold's going to revalue higher against those other assets and commodity is going to revalue itself against gold so you're going to you're going to you're going to get a revaluation where gold accounts for the money supply your inflation gauge so to speak 
and all of your commodities are going to revalue against gold and the money supply. It's a, it's a double ratio bet. And when these things are this cheap, they're probably going to go all the way to the opposite end at the end of the bull market. That could be 10 or 15 or 20 years away. I don't know how long this is going to last, but it's going to be a very powerful, very long bull market uh, because of the imbalances in the system and because of how cheap commodities are at and how long they've been cheap. We've got massive underinvestment in commodities. And the commodities that I see that are absolute winners going forward are platinum, silver, oil, uh, uranium, and natural gas. Oil and natural gas I kind of put together. Those are the ones that I see with massive imbalances in their ratios. And this is what the ratios look like. Here's uranium. And right now, if you do the math, it's at 62. If you notice, it hasn't been this cheap. Uh, this is going back to the 70s. I don't think it's ever been this cheap, period. And the only way that you could really be this cheap is if you're phasing it out. And they're not phasing out uranium. Uh, they just haven't bought anything for a very long time. And there's been extreme underinvestment in uranium, which is going to, it's going to come and, and flip the ratio all the way back down uh, over, over a period of time. It's going to take time. This isn't overnight. But when you look at this bull market in the 2007 area, we were not anywhere near as under priced as we were back then. This move could be massively larger than it, than it was in the 2000s. Just absolutely blow this thing out of the water. The, the, the opportunities here. Now here's gold to oil ratio and, and the same thing is happening. We had this massive COVID crash, which brought the ratio completely out of whack. It's saying that oil is literally free compared to history. And we're still in the 40s. We're like at 48. It has been declining some or 46, 43. It's somewhere in there. So gold, um, oil is making gains against uh, gold. But it's got a long way to go. I mean, this was, this was like 6, 7, 8 in here uh, at the top of 2008. And if we hit to that, that region again, prices are going to be way higher than what they are today. And here's the platinum to gold ratio history. Right now, we're, we're at about a half. 0.5. And that ratio is contracting against platinum is, is making better gains against gold. Uh, now, it broke out of its pattern. And I'm going to sh I'll show everybody that. But in history, I mean, it's got it's been as high as three, which means platinum was three times the cost of gold. If gold goes to 10,000, three times the cost of gold means that platinum could be 30,000. I'm not saying that's where it's going. What I'm saying is it's possible. It is possible. And in this bull market, it could even go better than that. You don't, we don't know. We just know that this stuff is so underpriced. And if it were to regain all of its valuation, gold could go to 50,000 and platinum could go at 150,000. Is that crazy? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We're looking at things in this, in this world that are extremely underpriced. They're literally like free compared to history. So, you know, what are the ratios telling us today? Gold is cheap to the money supply in Dow. Commodities are cheap to gold. And during commodity cycle tops, we see huge reversals in valuations uh, against each other. So commodities are going to reprice themselves against gold, and gold's going to reprice itself against the money supply in Dow. Commodities could become expensive in relationship to gold at the end of the bull market. And gold could become expensive to the Dow and the money supply. So commodities can gain massive valuations against all other assets in the world. And in my opinion, this is where we need to be. You know, I, I, I hope that this presentation gives you guys a little bit better, a clearer picture on how to use ratios and what they mean. Uh, if you don't understand, keep looking at them, keep using them and watching, watch them over time fluctuate against each other uh, and, and then correlate that to price. Just just watch them and, 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 and learn. Because what you're going to notice is that you're going to say, wow, this one's really making gains against everything else. And that's that should be the light bulb. When platinum is outperforming gold, it means that you can own more ounces of gold. It means that you can, mo if it's going up at a faster rate than the dial, you can buy more stock with it. That's the whole point of this, is that your asset gains value against all the other assets and you can buy more of the other assets. That is it. That is called purchasing power gains. If you make a paper gain, but you can buy less of all the other assets, you actually lost purchasing power gains. 
you're not doing your job as an investor. So hopefully you got a better understanding here. Hopefully what you, you continue to look at these ratio charts, you understand the value and you pile into the undervalued assets in a very strategic way. And if you're playing the high, I'll call it the high leverage game of stocks and especially small caps with high, high risk, that's how SM Energy, you know, it's had over 100% gain in a very short period of time. We're doing that based off of high leverage. Uh, these companies were close to bankruptcy. So be careful. Don't put all your money in it. Spread it out and do it in a calculated fashion. Don't get, we'll call it risky with this stuff. Okay. If you like this content, please subscribe, click the thumbs up button uh, and leave comments below. Thank you.